and welcome back to Chari's Feet Huxley. Huxley, you gonna be in the video? You gonna be a good boy? Good. Um, this is my January reviews video and I didn't have the most successful January in terms of reading. I did read four books in total um, and we're gonna talk about them, aren't we? He's not enjoying this, he's going on the floor. <laughs> I like to start the year by reading something quite vacant and short and fast just to feel like I got off to a good start. So I picked The Majesties by Tiffany Tsao um, and I <laughs> hated it. <laughs> I thought it was so awful. I was like, oh, just a short book that I can breeze through in the first, like by the 4th of January or something. Um, but I, you know when you dislike a book but you're still determined to read it so you just read it quite slowly and get more and more annoyed? That was this. This was published in 2018 and follows a Chinese uh, dynasty based in Jakarta in Indonesia and these two sisters Gwendolyn and Estella. The story is told from Gwendolyn's point of view as Estella um, poisons their entire extended family uh, and kills everyone but Gwendolyn. We go back in a load of different timelines to tell the story of how this happened. Their family owns a load of businesses but Gwendolyn goes and makes her own big business called Bagatelle. They somehow make some serum to control bugs and insects um which is weird and use them as fashion pieces it's a strange thing they're basically hobbyist entomologists i didn't have a lot of respect for this book from the start because i didn't care about the characters um and it did that thing that i really hate when it's a first person um narrative and they sort of tease what's going to happen in the future but in a way that's like really really smug but it does that and then it also does the whole like you won't believe what happened next and then like immediately say what happened next and it's like what's the point what's the point it was annoying me enough with its structure and its like pretty inane content and then it had one of those <gasps> twists and the twist was so bad <laughs> it was so badly introduced and it was badly structured and i'm really annoyed that i started my year out on this terrible book let's move on to something fantastic which is david copperfield by charles dickens um i keep wanting to call this great expectations every time i talk about it i accidentally say great expectations i even accidentally bought a copy of great expectations when i was trying to find this book and it's because they have almost the same amount of letters in the name and that is how my brain codes things which is very frustrating <laughs> this is charles dickens seminal seminal novel um it came out in 1850 and it is a chunk it's a big book but it is so good <laughs> like there's nothing bad about it it's really hard to critique because i thought it was really 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 good and um yeah a lot better than than other charles dickens i've read i made a separate video all about this uh where you can hear me gush about it a little bit more <laughs> um, so links for that below then the third book i read in january i actually didn't finish um and that is a guide to the good life by William B. Irvine. So this is like an intro to Stoicism. I got like almost halfway through um, before I gave it up. And as I was reading, I was quite annoyed with myself. I was like, why am I not really enjoying this and like flying through it? Is it because it's nonfiction? It's a bit dry, all this like historical context. But then I realized there were two things that were annoying me about it. Um, one is that it's very much like an introduction to Stoicism. Like if you don't know any of um, the major players and the timeline and stuff. Super useful information. But I've read quite a lot of stoicism, so none of that was like new information to me, uh, which made it a bit boring. And the other thing is I thought the author was weirdly opinionated. Um, so he's a professor of philosophy and then got into stoicism and I think he'd only been practicing practicing stoicism a couple years before he wrote this book. There was one thing that particularly bothered me, um, and it was about the dichotomy of control. So Epictetus, one of the main stoic folk that we still have uh, writings of, um, said, there are some things that are in our control and some that aren't. This is one of the fundamental foundational concepts of stoicism. Uh, but then he goes on to be like, but there are things that like, are in our control but aren't entirely in our control so shouldn't that really be a trichotomy so we can think about it this way instead and it's like dude <laughs> calm down people have thought about this i think a lot of those sort of things are open to personal interpretation um like when you're thinking about impulses are they within your control are they not within your control my mental model is very much a dichotomy like the things are in my control are anything physical to me even if it's me feeling like oh i want to eat a chocolate bar i would still consider that like my responsibility to control and mr irvine talks about like oh but if you have like a tennis match that's 
like it's in your control to work hard but it's not in your control to um win and yeah that's fine that doesn't that doesn't mean it's a middle ground that still means there are things that you can control things you anyway basically he has his own mental models for these things and is introducing them as if they were the the way to think about stoicism um for people that hadn't approached it before i appreciate this is an extremely particular reading of this book um i think if you come into if you don't know anything about stoicism probably a really good primer but do be conscious of his interpretations of these ancient teachings um that's why like most stoics say the best way to get into stoicism is to read the actual stoics instead of any modern interpretation thinking about it now i don't know why i thought this book would actually be a good read for me <laughs> i should have just <laughs> he did that own advice and god read some epic details myself but i like an occasional just like broad refresher of stoicism to keep it front of mind um uh, but this just frustrated me enough to be like i don't want to read the rest of it so um yeah gave up and that basically brings us to the end of january um apart from audiobooks as i said in my last um wrap up i have been listening to the jeeves and worcester um collection on audible read by stephen fry i've now listened to two and a half books from that so the inimitable jeeves i can never say the word uh carry on jeeves and i'm halfway through right ho jeeves and they are just nice they're just lovely to listen to nice funny stories just an enjoyable pastime <laughs> at the moment my main audiobook time is while i'm doing puzzles um i'm pretty sure i must have talked about this on this channel before but i have this project uh called abstract puzzles you can follow on instagram uh, but it basically means that i spend a couple hours a week doing puzzles it's so pleasurable to be so singularly focused on one thing and listening to to audio because i think a lot of the rest of the time that i'm listening to podcasts it's like cooking or cleaning or traveling in a way that you have to have like a slight awareness of a lot of different things around you but just sitting focusing on a puzzle listening to an audiobook is bliss so i'm on the hunt for other big audiobook collections to go through after i've done this because i don't just want to be listening to harry potter on loop um and i think i've now listened to pretty much everything that stephen fry has ever narrated <laughs> but if you have a good recommendation for a good series with a not very american sounding author just personally that just jars for me um i would love to hear it thank you for watching this video i can already tell you that february has been a far more successful reading month so i look forward to sharing that with you in a couple of weeks and that's it some people might say it's cruel that i just pick up my dog whenever i want so i could feature him in videos but to them i say haha i have a cute dog and you probably don't i hope you also have a lovely february and i'll see you soon bye